Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today is the day that I'm going to be talking about the Dallas Miniatures Showcase. There's lots of stuff that went on there, and so I'm going to be talking about my haul, which means the things that I purchased. I'm going to be talking about the class that I took. I'm going to be talking about my display, because I took some of my pieces and displayed them, and you guys were really interested in how that went. I'm going to be talking about a secret project that I've never shown you guys before, and finally Finally, at the very end, we are going to be voting on a new project to replace the abandoned coffee shop. Now that's a lot of stuff to happen in one video. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Uh, it'd be good just to hold them down by okay. your side. Yeah, great. So I'm going to leave some time marks down in the description. So if any of that sounds like something that you're not interested in learning about, you can just skip forward to the next section of the video. So the Dallas Miniature Showcase is really cool because it has such a wide range of vendors and prices. So even if you're feeling like you don't have that much money to spend, you can typically find something at this show. There were items ranging from 50 cents all the way up to $12,000 and over for a single item. And let me tell you, it was pretty spectacular. Now I tend to shop around. I like to get the lower price deals because you know, budgets and stuff. Um, but honestly, for the items that are too expensive for me to afford, I just treat it like my own little miniature museum and I love to look at the items and just admire the craftsmanship because I am sure they are worth the price tag that is on them, but I just can't afford it. So I enjoy, I talk to the vendors who are usually the artists themselves and I just enjoy the show. So I'm gonna show you some of my purchases starting from the least expensive going up and um, kind of tell you what I was thinking as I purchased them. I'm also gonna try my best to show you the vendor information. So if you're interested in any of their items, I do like to cross out the addresses and phone numbers just in case those that's personal information. But here you can see some of the contact information if you're interested in any of these items. So this was the first vendor that I went to and I really liked her table because she was the one who had items for 50 cents. And I did give my daughter like $10 to shop around because she also has a few miniature projects and so she really enjoyed her table as well. My first item was this little vulture guy. I thought he was incredibly cute and he is going to be going in my Adams Family graveyard and he was only like $5. If I know the prices, I will try and let you guys know so that you can kind of be aware of what I spent on each item. Next, I have this little bird cage and I really liked the age on this and this looks like it was 650 and also that I can open it because I really do want to put some like ravens or something inside and the fact that the bottom opens up was really helpful. I don't have to build this incredibly delicate cage and I can easily access the inside and the door does open. So I really liked this piece as well for the atoms. I also bought a little pair of rain boots and I really like these. Um, if you watched my abandoned coffee shop, you'll know that I'm trying to do a single shoe in each project, kind of as my signature piece. So I'm going to be starting to collect some shoes so that I have enough for each project. Wrapped up nicely here, I have a little owl statue and I thought this was so delicately done and just really well painted and just really cute and even the eyes were just really well done and so I liked this piece for an office piece I don't know if it'll go into the atoms but this one was eleven dollars next I have a mixture of items and these don't actually have the prices on them so um, typically if they don't have a price they were anywhere from fifty cents to three dollars this is a little bottle that says blood thistle this will probably go in Grandmama's kitchen. I don't know if y'all can see that. Um, here's other little, oh, these do have the prices. These were 250. This says cyanide, cyanide on the front, and I got two of those. So those will definitely go in Grandmama's kitchen. I got this little ornate vase. Oh, this one has a 250 on it as well. It's a little haunted house. I thought that would be cute in Wednesday's room or on the shelf somewhere. And all these little bats were 50 cents each. And they're rubbery so I can kind of like close up their wings and I think I want to put them in the bell tower of the Adams house. 
but I thought they were really cute and a cool addition for 50 cents. So these were all the items I purchased from T&D Miniatures and Dollhouses. Next up, I have my purchases from Details Miniatures, and his items that he made are more laser cut items, and they were gorgeous. They were so beautiful, and I wish I had taken a picture. I didn't actually end up buying items that he had personally made. I saw these three items on his table, and immediately I had to purchase them, and you'll know why in a second, because I have a severe addiction to miniature ships. So I'm gonna pull these out so you can see the three miniature ships that I purchased. And I believe that these were $15 each. Oops, yeah, $15. So I will be adding these guys to my miniature ship collection. I thought they were really well done and I don't have ones that are like these. Here's the second ship. It's a little bit more brightly colored and I liked that about this one. Some oranges and yellows. And then here is the third one and it has a little bit more of a vintage look and a few more details on it than the other two. So I really liked this one as well. So here are my purchases from Details Miniatures. Next up I have my purchase from Ron Stetkowitz. Stetkowitz hope I said that correctly, Ron Stetkowitz, and he's actually the guy I took the class from, so you will see more of his miniatures in a second. I went ahead and I purchased this tiny brass dragon, and he's so adorable, and he is um, put together, he has a pin on one side, um, I guess so that you can put him into the wall, he's more like a wall mounted piece, but he's aged and has this really cool um, like teal patina on him and all of Ron's stuff is hand sculpted either by him or by his father. His father was a miniaturist as well and I thought his story behind his miniatures was really really cool. It was becoming, I mean it really is like a family business so I really enjoyed his class. I enjoyed seeing his miniatures and he did give me, I'll put my little dragon there so I don't lose it. Oh and this was about um, 20. I mean for a hand sculpted brass sculpture you know, I feel like that's definitely fair. And um, he has so many different things that he has put together over the years. And if you're into finely crafted miniatures, I mean, his stuff is where it's at. I like to fake a lot of my metals and fake a lot of the materials I make, but um, his metals are all real, finely crafted and really beautiful. So I definitely appreciated getting to see his miniatures. Okay, my next miniature is one of those things that I probably could have made myself and saved myself some money, but it was so perfect for Gomez, and I'll show you why. Um, but sometimes you just see something that's so perfect and you're like, that's awesome, I love how it looks, I don't have to make it, and so you make the purchase, or at least I did. So I'll show you this piece. And I'll mark off the phone number there in a second. Although I do believe this is an actual store. Yes, this is an actual store, so I can probably show you this one. But look at this beautiful piece here. We have two kind of smoking jacket looking pieces and they're amazingly draped. And we've got some keys here and they look like they're metal, actual metal keys hanging on this ring here. We've got a pipe and a little, um, ashtray. We've got a few books, a shoehorn, and some leather gloves, and a pocket watch right here. And I thought this whole piece was just really beautifully put together. I believe it was around 30 or $35 for this piece. And for the craftsmanship and just everything being done so well, for me, that was worth it. I love this piece. I think it's going to go outside of um, Gomez and Morticia's bedroom in the hallway, and I think it will look amazing there. And this is the store. It's called Miniature Design, and I believe it's an actual store in Georgia. And so here's their information if you want to stop in. They were so nice, so sweet, lovely to talk to, and it looks like they have just so many different things. So definitely check them out if you're in that area. And it also looks like they have a website. They sell things online as well. Now my next four purchases are quite a chunk of change, but it is for the Adams family house and the Adams need lighting. 
and I've been putting it off and off and off and off um, because it first of all the Adams Family House is not wired and I've been wanting to do battery powered lights and I think just now really battery powered lights are becoming really popular over um, some of the wiring options so when I saw lights at this show I just knew I had to jump in feet first I have two different lighting purchases from two different companies so I will show you them and um, uh, eventually I think I will do a video showing them in the Adams Family house and show you how I install them and how I kind of um, blend them into the ceiling and all that kind of stuff but let me go ahead and show you the lights that I purchased so this first purchase comes from the little dollhouse company and I do believe yes this is an actual brick-and-mortar store in Canada it looks like it's in Toronto Ontario and so if you're in that area make sure to go and check them out they were also incredibly nice and this is the light they sent me with an extra battery so I will pull it out so that you can see it lit up Okay, they actually sent me with two extra batteries. There's one here at the top, or three? No, two, two extra batteries. But I really loved this brass aged effect. It's really beautiful. It's got two glass globes. Can't speak, glass globes. And I'll turn it on for you. And it's probably a little hard to see with my lights but it has this really beautiful warm glow to it and I'm not quite sure exactly there's only one light I know exactly what room it's going in I'm not quite sure what this one is going to be going in but it's just beautiful and I believe this one was about $35 for this light for a battery light I think that's a really good deal especially one that's this beautifully done so this was the only light that I purchased from the Little Dollhouse Company, even though they had several more. Oh look, it was $34. Um, but I did purchase from another person who had lights just a little bit cheaper, but I could not pass up this one just because it was so beautiful. The other vendor that I bought lights from was Lisa Hicks, who owned a wee bit teeny Modern Minis Incorporated. And she, I believe, was from LA. And so it was the first time she had been to the Texas show. I was really excited to see her table because she had some really affordable lighting. And um, so here's her information. Um, it's a wee bit teeny .com. Her text is really small, so I'm reading it for you. But I really thought she had a great array of options for lighting at decent prices. So I ended up getting three different lights from her. And here's one of them. Oh, here we go and they are all battery powered and LED powered I think all of her lights were like a bright white um, in color but I am going to try some experiments to try and get them to um, be a warmer tone but she did show me it's really cool that you can if you get it just right they'll flicker I don't know if this one will do it. Anyway, <laughs> you can um, mess with them just a little bit to get them to flicker or just stay on completely. So I think this would be a really nice dining room addition or maybe in the formal living room. We shall see. Oh, and all these lights from her are all $25. This next one has more of an aged brass look to it. And here it is on Hope y'all can see that. I do like, I mean, they're not super duper bright, but honestly, I like that they're a little toned down because I do think when you have super bright lights in your dollhouse projects, it's really difficult to take pictures because the light can overtake the entire scene. So this one I think is just really pretty and you can kind of bend these out a little bit to straighten them up. They come a little scrunched in whenever you um, first purchase them, but she did show me how you can straighten them out a little bit and um, these are actual glass globes and I just thought they had a really nice vintage look to them and you can unscrew these if you just want to have just the plain LED sticking out so you can make it a little bit customizable 
So this was my final purchase from this vendor and as you can tell it is a little bit broken. She did notice that it was broken before she sold it to me and was like, oh let me get you a new one. And I said, well can I have the broken one at a discount? Because this light in particular, because of its kind of renaissance-y kind of look to it, I want to put it in grandmama's basement. And what's better for a basement light than a broken one? So, and these also can flicker. I don't know if you guys can see that light flickering a little bit. And so I'll just have, kind of have to mess around with it, but I just thought this was a really cool design. She was really sweet to give me a discount. Hopefully I helped her out a little bit too by taking a broken piece off her hands. Like I said, these are real glass globes on here, so that's why you have to be really delicate with these. But I just think they're really elegantly made and for a price tag of $25 for items that um, light up with batteries and she did say they're watch batteries so they last quite a while so I'm extremely happy with my lighting purchases I'm really excited to get these into the Adams mansions and that may be a really soon upcoming video because I am so excited to see how these actually look in the mansion so those were all my purchases from the Dallas Miniature Showcase, and I will leave links if they have websites, I will leave links to those websites in the description box below. So now I'm gonna be talking about the class that I took, which was with Ron Stetkowitz. I'm not even sure he actually said his last name. We just called him Ron. He was a really nice guy and he went really slow and made sure that everybody knew what they were doing. The class that I took was called Dremel 101 and it was using your Dremel to grind and polish metal and then also to sculpt wood. And so he went really slow and took his time explaining things to us and we were very blessed, I think, to have his own little brass sculptures for us to choose from and it was the what you're supposed to have at the end of the class were these little sea creature type sculptures. And so I have this little brass whale. I don't know if you can see. And so it started out not looking like this. He showed us how to use the Dremel and some polish to polish these guys up to be this beautiful shine. And there's also, I did two sharks my son loves sharks so I grabbed two sharks we were able to choose which um, sea creatures we wanted to work on and here's the other shark whoops okay, there we go here's my other shark so once we had polished those up um, we were to take some wood grind it down make some like um, sea what do they call it sea wood no that's not it ocean wood whatever that wood is that that washes up on the um, there's a name for it I just can't think of it right now but um so that you could put the animals like kind of like they're floating on top of the wood pieces now I'm not super happy with how I created my pieces and the reason for that is I was not in the classroom at the time he was explaining this I had to go bring in my displays from the car so I kind of missed his explanation on this um, other people's looked a lot better than mine so I kind of wish I hadn't missed that but no worries I just didn't want my displays to melt in the Texas heat in the car what they're supposed to do is your little animals are supposed to float above the wood and it's supposed to be a piece that you can kind of put on a shelf and um, display maybe like in um, a seaside shop something like that so these are really beautiful um, his were amazing and um, I'm probably going to redo this wood part so that I can do justice to these beautiful brass animals that he sculpted so I really enjoyed that class. If you have a chance to take a class by him, I highly suggest it. It was fun, enjoyable, came away with um, three beautiful miniatures that I'm still working on, but um, a lot of people did finish the project. I just had my own issues apparently. <laughs> So moving on to the display part, they had an entire room available for displaying miniatures that you had completed in the previous year. And I brought four projects. One of them was the abandoned coffee shop. The other one was my Kraken project. The third one was my gargoyles project. And the final one is my secret project that I've been working on behind the scenes. And I will explain, don't be too mad, 
okay? I will explain why it was a secret, but I really enjoyed showing these items and I didn't just like stand next to my project the entire time. I uh, did other things, but every now and then I would walk through the display area and it was so cool to see people kind of like down on their knees, like trying to look at all the details inside the abandoned coffee shop. There were a few people who had seen it online, so that was really cool that I got to talk to them and they were able to express how much they enjoyed the series, and I appreciated that so much. And it's just amazing to be able to share miniatures with other miniaturists that really understand and enjoy those projects. Like I said, also on display was my secret project. And the reason I'm hoping you won't be too mad at me is because I was making it in secret for my sister who does watch my channel. So if I had been building along while she was watching my channel, it wouldn't have been a secret. Although I kind of ruined it because I needed her to make some items for it. This is Carlin's Crochet Shack, obviously named that because my sister's name is Carlin and she loves to crochet. That is her craft of choice. And this is based off of a kit. I believe it's called the Time Traveler's Kit. It's a little caravan. It comes with everything you need to create it. Now I did not use most of the miniatures that came with it. I kind of just used the shell and then built my own interior miniatures. If you're interested in this kit, I will leave a link in the description to Square to Spare's channel. She did a really in-depth tour of how to put this kit together if you're super interested in it. But I just kind of went with um, things that were a little bit more personal to me and my sister. A couple items in there are actually family heirlooms. And as you can see, she did an amazing job on the miniature crochet projects. There's even a little yellow hat in there. There's a granny square blanket. She did all of the drapes. And um, I also signed a shoe for her. I had a lot of fun doing this project. It was way out of my usual comfort zone, but it's totally her. This was also a project that was a group project done by the Dallas Miniatures Guild. And I did take a couple pictures of their projects as well that they gave me permission to share with you. I tried to get a shot of the overall caravan and then a shot of the inside and I will put the artist's name with them. But it was really cool to see them together and to see how well this project was done as a group uh, and the different interpretations that can come from this one single kit. I know these pictures are going by a little bit fast, but feel free to pause. There's so many details in each one of these. You're going to want to make sure and take a really good look. And finally, we need to vote on a new project. Now I thought this through and I've decided that I only want to have one pop culture project at a time and then one personal project going at a time. And so right now I have the Adams Family. And so once that's finished, I already have another pop culture idea of a project that I want to start. But um, we need to fill in the personal project. Now the abandoned coffee shop, I consider a personal project because I was not basing it off of any other reference except just my own mind. And so I have two project ideas and you guys get to vote because I love them both equally. And I loved how much you guys helped me in the previous one, so I want you guys to love the next project just as much. I'm only going to give you the titles of the project. I'm not going to give you any details or um, any clues as to what might be in those projects, but um, just hopefully off the titles you guys can either get excited about one or the other. I will put a voting card over here maybe for you guys. It has a little I. You can click that and vote. The first project that you have to choose from is called The Ship Captain's Den. So I'll say it again, The Ship Captain's Den. And the other project you can choose from is The King's Tomb. So please vote for either The Ship Captain's Den or The King's Tomb. And I might rename The Ship Captain's Den depending on like it doesn't flow very well, but you get the idea. So the ship captain's ten, den, to blah, 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 see, that's why I need to rename it, or the king's tomb. So please leave a vote up here and um, I will kind of reveal whenever that, whatever project gets voted up the most, I will reveal that and we will get started on a new personal project that I'm hoping will be loved just as much as the abandoned coffee shop. 
Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thank you for being in on this longer type video. There was so much information in here, but I really appreciate you guys coming along with me. I'm so excited that you guys were interested in how the show went, and I'm glad I could share it with you. Please leave me any comments down below. Maybe you could guess what either one of those projects might be about. I'd love to know what your favorite purchase of mine was, and if you do go check out any of these other vendors, I'd love to know that as well. I hope you guys have an amazing week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!